Good afternoon, I hope you're enjoying your Monday afternoon. It is 20 minutes to 2 o'clock and you're chatting with Jade Robran. I spoke earlier in the show about Adelaide and it's just buzzing. I was in town on Friday night and I was there with my father-in-law who's from interstate and he just couldn't believe how electric Adelaide is. It was absolutely pumping. The whole street's blocked off. You've got cafes having to build new chairs and tables there's kids doing acrobats people do it it's just everywhere it's a it's alive and it's buzzing and it's just such a great vibe around at the moment and it's all thanks to all these incredible festivals on right now but what does this mean all these people all these festivals what does it actually mean for our state i've got peter luca executive director from arts sa and christy anthony who is the executive director for festivals sa guys thanks so much for coming in pleasure jay thanks for having us thanks very much there is no question it's adelaide's just alive and kicking right now isn't it yeah absolutely is i mean you cannot um miss it it's just astonishing how internationalised Adelaide becomes at this time of the year. Mm. Um, I, I, I have this little um, throwaway line that I use which is Adelaide is the international capital of the world right now <laughs> in festival terms. It, it, it is, you have the entire world converging on Adelaide and I think sometimes we take it for granted because we're from here yeah. and we don't realise that this is something quite unique and special. We're not just the world's, um, the, the nation's biggest um, festival, multi-arts festival, but we're the second biggest in the world. Yeah, wow, that's huge. Well, I also love when you're walking around, you just pick up all these accents from all around the world and you've got people from all walks of life, ages. It's just really nice to be a part of it. It is. It's, uh, there's one of the program itself, because the Adelaide Fringe, it being the largest fringe uh, in Australia and the second largest in the world, mm. coincides at the same time as the Adelaide Festival of Arts, mm. which brings some of the world's best quality production works, um, absolutely jaw-droppingly enormous productions, mm. alongside Warm Adelaide, which is the world world music beautiful experience in the park for four days, means that, that this cluster is, well, it's just boom. <laughs> what is Fringe and the Adelaide Festival running these two at the moment? And they seem to be bigger and better than ever. What does it actually mean for the state right now? It, it's got a serious economic impact. Yeah. I, I work for Festivals Adelaide, which is actually the peak body for 10 festivals in, uh, in South Australia, because we do have festivals all year round. We peak now, uh, like prawns at Christmas, and then we <laughs> have huge other significant peaks uh, that are more sort of genre specific I guess throughout the year such as the, um, the world's largest cabaret festival and a re an extraordinary spectacular film festival children's festival and so on um, but what it means is jobs it means employment it means economic impact mm. it means it's an industry and a sector and it's something that we're really good at in South Australia. So we've got Adelaide Fringe which we've spoken about Adelaide Festival Dream Big Cabaret Sala Oz Asia Film Festival Feast and guitar festival. How important are these festivals to our state? Significantly important. They're part of the brand of who we are. They're part of our DNA. You mm. know, this is what we do. It's sort of like going to, um, to Italy to watch people throw tomatoes at each other. <laughs> you come here and watch us lap up our culture. It's been ingrained and it all starts I think with Come Out and well it's now called Dream Big. It was Come Out, you'll remember yeah. Come Out. For, uh, this is now its first year as Dream Big International Children's Festival and uh, that festival is statewide and gives children a really amazing experience of really quality work and from that we grow forth into an understanding mm. and appreciation of art. And we do and, and we, we do incredibly well in uh, children's um, performing arts in fact. Yeah. Uh, Windmill Theatre have had enormous success internationally, Patch, um, Slingsby uh, were performing this year in New York and won uh, an incredibly prestigious prize at the IPAY uh, conference which is an international market opportunity in New York. They won the judges uh, prize for the best work. Uh, so that's, that's beating everyone else in the world. Um, and these the guys all have a, um, a, a platform uh, to show their work in an international setting in Adelaide, you know, mm. through the festivals. So they can create beautiful work year round and then um, be invited to uh, to put it on through the Adelaide Festival or any of the other curated festivals or go it alone and, and register it in the Fringe and, and see, uh, 
see how it flies and tweak it from there. I was talking to the director of Fringe and we were chatting about Adelaide Festival, I think it was opening night at the Fringe Parade, and she was saying it's quite remarkable the Adelaide Festival and Fringe just bring in so many international guests and then they go to New York, like Adel well, Adelaide, we all know that Adelaide Fringe is so well known here, but it's probably the second most well known is in New York. That's incredible tourism and just that's just through word of mouth. That's right. I mean, there's uh, several elements mm. to the to the way this works. There is a, a trade element to these festivals mm. because every art centre in the world, every venue that's in Wagga Wagga or Griffith or or um, you know even here in South Australia need product. They need really great shows, mm. and these festivals are the sort of shopping um, mall as such mm. <laughs> to get them. So we are right now. Um, Heather Kroll and the Fringe are running a program called Honeypot where hundreds of buyers from these venues and mm. other festivals descend here to find work but then take it away. There's some great examples. And, and last week we ran um, a new mm. market called Showbroker, yeah. um, which was a market for um, national performing uh, tour-ready work. So that means that these regional art centres, um, other city art centres, so the, the hardware, so to speak, are able to come to Adelaide. We had 200 delegates um, from all over the country come to South Australia. We had international delegates as well. Right. And for three days, we were running a, a buyers and sellers market. And it really works um, in the way that you would, uh, it's almost akin to, to going to the central market and seeing the wares and the fruit yeah. out on the stall. You've got artists and productions being pitched to buyers and producers mm. uh, and people signing deals and, and negotiating uh, in Adelaide. Uh, to take things across the country and, in some instances, um, to parts of Asia. See, that's what I love about it. I mean, we're talking to these big, I guess, Hollywood agents kind of thing yeah. that are looking for the next big thing. Yeah. And little would you know, you've performed, you know, your show in Adelaide and you might just get a tap on the shoulder to say, hey, yeah. you're great for this sitcom or you're great for this Broadway show. That's quite a phenomenal there, opportunity. There was a show, actually, a bloke called Dan Dor, who's from Adelaide. He has mm. cerebral palsy. He's an extraordinary performer. He created a piece of work that was uh, funded a bit through a fund, the Fringe Runs, an artist fund that when you buy a ticket you can put into this fund. And Anyway, he got some money from that, put the show together, performed it in Adelaide, had a huge, huge uh, success with it, won a Fringe Award for the week, yeah. and then got picked up by a New York performer who's taking him to um, a place called Soho Playhouse in New York in May. Wow. I know, just gone, boom, boom. So then How he'll... good's that? Yeah. He, he's um he's chuffed as you can imagine. That's just one of many 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 stories. You can't quite keep a grip on who's being picked up where. But similarly with the Adelaide Festival, yeah. I mean Saul, this spectacular and enormous production by Barry Kosky, was exclusive to Adelaide. So therefore the whole world flew in to see it. Yeah. In terms of um, about half opera. of the tickets went to interstate and overseas um, buyers. Is that right? So fifty percent of the audiences for Saul were from outside of South Australia. And then this week, uh, coming up in a minute, we've got a whole bunch of new people arriving because, of course, WOMAD's on, and that's the real peak when the three are on at this time of year. Uh, and Festivals Adelaide is part of an international festival cities network. So there are uh, festival cities around the world, and we're the Australian version of that, chosen to become uh, participate in this group. And, yeah, I mean, it includes, you know, people like Edinburgh, of course, Montreal, yeah. Krakow and Poland, Barcelona and Buenos Aires and Adelaide. And... They're coming here to have conversations about shared understanding of festival cities and yeah, you know, there's lots that we need to discuss around um, sh sharing methodology of how we measure our successes and mm. infrastructure and what happens to shows, what happens to theatre companies in the off season when the festivals aren't on, you know, for a festival city, that's quite an interesting discussion mm. and we'll bring in other people to, um, to hear those thoughts and then we'll, we've actually got, this is a pilot program and we do need to work out what happens next to this network. But well, that. let's talk about what happens next <laughs> after the break. We've got to take a really quick break. I'm chatting festivals. Of course, Adelaide is alive at the moment with all of our festivals on. I've got Peter Luca, Executive Director from Arts SA and Christy Anthony, Executive Director of Festivals SA. And we've got some exciting news to chat about after the break. You're listening to Far Double A. 
Good afternoon, you're chatting with Jade Robert and we're talking about our beautiful festival state and how successful the Fringe and Adelaide Festival is right now. I'd love to hear from you guys. What is your favourite festival and why? And have you seen an amazing act, an awesome act that you've absolutely loved at one of our festivals? 8223 0000. I've got Peter Luca, Executive Director from Arts SA and Christy Anthony from Festivals SA in the studio. Guys, I mean, we know that there's a lot of foot traffic around. We're seeing a lot of people, but is it reflecting in the ticket sales as well? It is. Um, we know that the fringe sales are up around about um, 3% from last year at the moment. Uh, last Friday, they broke the record for the total number of sales in a day. Oh, wow. And then the following Saturday, they blew that record as well. So um, it was a slow, you know, it was a steady build up to it. But then you look at the um, Adelaide Festival. Uh, their box has reached record levels. They've never um, taken more ticket sales. Uh, they're now in excess of three and a half million dollars of box office sales, and they've they've had several sellouts. Saul is sold out. Uh, Rest of Stamps Company's uh, production is sold out. It is just an enormous endorsement for uh, the work that the new co-directors, R Rachel Healy and Neil Armfield, have put into uh, that festival and a huge endorsement for uh, the Fringe and Heather Crawl. There's 400 venues involved in Fringe this year, uh, over 1,500 artists, um, and, of course, WOMAD with a spectacular mm. lineup. And we know that about... 48%? Um, uh, roughly, of, of tickets. Of, yeah, come from interstate. Oh, really? Yeah. Goodness me, that's a really high number. Yeah, nearly, yeah, half of their whole audience comes comes across the border for it. <laughs> wow. I've actually never been, and oh. it is on my to-do list it's this a, year to do. It, it's, a, it, it's an experience. It's extraordinary. It's like another whole world in there. And, yeah. Um, and, and a lot of people have got preconceptions about being a hippie festival and so on. It's, it's a world music festival and it's in a beautiful park and it's a really rich and professional experience. But just to put zoom out a bit uh, in relation to what that means on a national scale, mm. there's a survey that's run by a company called Live Performance Australia. They're a ticketing survey for the whole country. Bass and Ticketek and Master, everyone um, gives their ticketing information mm -hmm. to this. And there's proof there. There's a They survey festivals and it's a little beautiful pie, cart, pie chart that shows that we sell 47% of the nation's ticket sales for festivals. So That's that enormous. Out, it's over, well, it's hard. All the other states combined sell about, you know, similar to what we sell in one state. So, yeah, we're yeah, kicking so above our What about in context? So one out of every two tickets sold in the country is sold in, in South Australia. Wow, guys. Yeah. Congratulations. That's, that's fantastic. It's good, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, we've got all sorts of these stats. But, of course, we know that it's um there's there's more to it it's also about its social impact it's the way we, we feel we 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 believe that during festival time and this is true for cabaret festival and other festivals too mm. um people behave differently there there's something in the air that makes people just a little bit more open to try new things and uh get out there and you know uh, try try drinks try alternative transport methods try things they haven't done before mm. And that in itself is actually a really positive thing for the state. I tell you what, you, we do need some positivity. I mean, you hear of Coca-Cola closing, Telethon SA closing, and it, it does get your spirits down because you think, oh, doom and gloom. But then to see all these international visitors yeah. and the it's really buzzing and people are at the cafes, at the restaurants, they're spending money. It's... Yeah, we oh, need absolutely. these festivals, it's a don't we? massive injection into the economy. It's an industry uh, it, mm. and a sector as such. And, you know, we can talk about the 800 jobs that we create full-time in the festival sector, mm. let alone how many in the arts. There's over 3,000 direct jobs in the arts. And to put that in context, um, uh, the state budget funds mm. um, less than 0.8% is of the entire state budget goes to the arts. And for that, we produce nearly one point four billion dollars worth of gross state product. So it's all it's all you know ha happy days in this industry. A lot of people look, mm. look at um, you know look at the arts uh, and sort of question how how it is if it's a job, how do you get in, all of that sort of thing. Yeah. But you know, just sort of I guess putting it into a festival context, it. Um, it helps because you can see it. You can see it absolutely the the economic impact, the the mm. engagement, the money that's being spent. But Christy's right. It's much more than economic impact. Mm. It's about um, the kind of society and place we want to be, and how we express mm. ourselves and how we tell our stories. Um, quite often, um, uh, 
you know, we're, we're not quite certain what it means to be an Australian and being able to tell those stories through um, local art companies, through visual art. If you look at the uh, Tarnandi exhibition of uh, contemporary Aboriginal art at the um, the art gallery, which has now been funded by BHP for a record $17.5 um, million dollars over the next five years coming from the private sector from bhp to put on the indigenous contemporary art festival uh every year for the next five years so that's not one cent of public money that's mm. that's all coming out of um corporates because it adds incredible value uh to the kind of place we want to be and yeah. it makes us attractive to um as a place to settle mm. so if you're looking um if you're looking at the combination of things, so uh, it's not just um, uh, the festivals at the moment. Obviously, there's Clipsal as well, so there's a lot of visitation coming in. Um, even the concerts, you, know, you had the, the uh, Mundine match with yeah. Green. There's a lot of activity in the city. We're redoing the riverbank at the moment. Uh, we're, we're investing a huge amount of money into redeveloping the Adelaide Festival Centre mm. and the plaza. Um, stage one of that will be completed towards the end of this year. Uh, will we be opening, um, turning the, the festival centre around to face the river for the first time and really take that opportunity and, and uh, recreate and reimagine the city we live in? Oh, gorgeous. I do you ever um, struggle to convince our state that the arts and festivals, you know, are a good thing? You know, we're always hearing that people would prefer to spend money in other areas such as employment and health. Have, have you got a constant battle on your hands? I wouldn't say it's a battle because mm. deep down people get it. You know, there's yeah. a genuine bipartisan respect and an understanding. And we need it. Of the festivals, yeah. yeah. But in terms of that sort of uh, the investment for dollar return, that's a new concept in a way to a lot of people. Yeah. The fact that, for example, in the festivals, for every dollar given to by the government to the festivals and, and, and the city council, we will return 5.6, nearly $6 through, through the measurable, tangible yes. economic impact. But, you know, I, I, I agree we need it because I think we're, we are, you know, audiences or Adelaideans are, are intellectually rigorous and want mm. to be fed uh, alternative ways of thinking. There's, there's, there's lots of people who will explore new things. You know, it doesn't have to be big in Sydney or Melbourne before they're willing to give it a go here and... And and yeah, really find and and drive their their own inquis inquisitive. Mm. Inquisitive. Yeah, well, we lead it, don't we? That's <laughs> we for do. sure. And there's and there can be growing pains with with the growth as well. We've got um, uh, they're selling. I think last year, just under 700,000 tickets, for example, to the Fringe. Um, that's a lot of competition. It makes it a, it's a mm. demanding market. And we have a lot of independent venues and artists who do sometimes struggle for audiences. So um, it's a mixed bag. And, and you'd expect that because it is a pretty competitive environment. Mm. Uh, and a lot of activity off it obviously is drawn to the hubs. But we've got some remarkable work at places like Holden Street Theatres and Tuxedo Cat. And those sorts of, you know, the German club is now now a hub. Yeah. There's yeah. an incredible amount of activity going on around How's the city. How's the um, Flurio Fringe and, you know, Sterling Fringe and, and places like that? It's not just in the city. How how are those festivals going? Are they working? They are, and Sterling Fringe has been doing... Um, a uh, it's been going a cracker. Um, yeah. Uh, I know uh, Anya Anastasia, who um, is heavily involved in uh, yeah. curating that. Um, Gorgeous is place to host thrilled it. with that. I went down to Mount Gambia for the beginning of the Mount Gambia Fringe. Yeah. That also keep, keeps going and kicks off. It was hilarious. I sat next to a really wonderful woman called... Um, more uh, Mavis, I think her name was. If you're out there, hello. She sat next to me in the show, and that and she turned to me at some side, some point, and said, "It's bizarre, isn't it?" <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think it was so bizarre for her. It wasn't. It was wonderful. You know, it was down at the um, Hopgood Theatre down there. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, Sir Helpman, Robert Helpman, and yeah, wonderful feeling. There was a lot of people out. They were really happy to have a fringe down there. And for the first time, we're having Wyla Fringe as well. So it keeps on spreading outwards. There's Port Augusta last oh, weekend yeah. too. It's, uh, it's uh, all with over. Desert Fringe. There's been mm. a Desert Fringe program for the last. 10 years. Mm -hmm. I love that because that's a long way for people to travel to come into the city so why not bring it to them? That's yeah. smart. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You it's know. not just about Adelaide. We use Adelaide as as our main brand because mm -hmm. internationally people know Adelaide more than they know South Australia, especially in Edinburgh. 
Last year we took um, a new program to Edinburgh called Made in Adelaide and we brought uh, almost all of the festivals with us to Edinburgh. Mm. Edinburgh is the largest uh, fringe and most prestigious uh, festival of arts in the world. Yeah. And that happened in August and um, we signed three memorandums of understanding to um, uh, to build some cooperation between uh, Festivals Edinburgh and Festivals Adelaide and the Adelaide Festival. So they welcomed the us. They weren't, hang on, they you're did. our enemy. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> We've got a lot to learn from one another. Yeah, and, yeah of um, course. Uh, Edinburgh were in our position where... Um, uh, they they had some good numbers, mm-hmm. uh, but they they really invested in um, uh, their festival strategy, and and it uh, almost doubled, I think, mm, in yeah. six years. That's right. It's worked for them certainly, and and we're on that trajectory too. And in terms of um, spread, there's a festival called Sala, the South Australian mm. Living Artists Festival, which is on in August in Adelaide, whilst we're spruiking Adelaide in Edinburgh, and um, that's. Got that, and also the Dream Big Children Festival have reach right across the state. There are kids involved, and and um, artists involved in every country town, pretty much. For Sala, Sala is a an, an uncurated visual art festival. So if if you wanted to have a crack at it, you could do some work, mm. register, and put an exhibition <laughs> together, and and sell it. You know, it's a market as well in that sense. People do buy and sell their work. Guys, thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate it, Peter, Luca, and Christy Anthony. There, it's just nice to talk positive stuff about our state moving forward it's very exciting and you guys are doing great work here so thank you very much for joining us thank you thank you